Book TV recently visited Capitol Hill to ask members of Congress what they're reading this summer. Thanks for asking. As you know, I've taught economics for the past 18 years, and I went to seminary before that, so I usually like reading kind of a combination of economics and ethics. And on the stump speech, people thought that was kind of a humorous joke, but I actually take it pretty seriously. So I'm reading, uh, starting off with Peter Wallison, Hidden in Plain Sight. It's kind of the latest uh, definitive account of the causes of the financial crisis. And if you don't have an account of the causes of the financial crisis, it's kind of hard to solve uh, that issue going forward. We don't want that happening again. And there are some signs that uh, we're heading in the wrong direction with a, with a few of the economic variables, the debt to GDP and that kind of thing are, are off track again, and little hints in the mortgage business and uh, the Federal Reserve, et cetera, has some heavy lifting to do. And so that's the main economic uh, piece I want to read. And then the rest is kind of uh, the Western synthesis uh, between the Judeo-Christian tradition and the, the Greeks and the Enlightenment reason. And I taught that for the last 18 years, so I'm reading a few books. Uh, Whose Justice, Which Rationality by Alistair McIntyre out of Notre Dame fame, uh, one of the top philosophers in the country. And then I've got on my stack A Moral Vision of the New Testament by Hayes. He's considered one of the foremost authorities on ethics of the New Testament, so it's not on the religiosity, but on the moral vision contained within the New Testament. And then I got a book, uh, Economics as Religion, from Samuelson to Chicago, the Chicago School by Nelson. And I've been dabbling in uh, several of these books for a long time, but uh, I want to dig in a little deeper uh, because I think they're needed up here. And then the fun, final one I got on my stack is kind of a fun one. I made my way through some of it, but uh, it's called Bourgeois Dignity. And that is by Deidre McCloskey, and she's quite a uh, Renaissance scholar uh, herself. She uh, has been combining economics and ethics and literature for the past few decades. She's a Chicago School trained economist, but she's been validated by a bunch of Nobel Prize winners. Uh, high end Reed, she's got a six volume set in the works. I just referred you to the second volume, and it kind of takes on the causes of long-run economic growth, and most people aren't familiar with this, uh, but it's the issue that's uh, improved human welfare more than any other issue that you can name, period. And I, I think I say that with pretty good confidence. Uh, but her argument is, you know, all human civilization, uh, income per person is about $500 a year per person for all human history up till about 1800. Then at 1800, you get a hockey stick and you get massive explosive growth in the free market countries. And so there's been a lot of speculation on what's the true cause of that. I did my PhD in economics way back on that. I did cross-country economic growth. And she takes on every single one of the Nobel papers. It's not capital accumulation. It's not human capital. It's not science. It's not R&D. It's not private property rights. It's not the Industrial Revolution. And she dates every single one of these you know, variables. And she concludes uh, that the ultimate cause, the Biggest cause of long-run economic growth is th this is the first time in history, 1800, when our culture changed the moral language such that we, we started to call the business person morally good. And that's a whopper these days, right? In K-12 education, we're kind of neutral at best on that proposition. You know, what do we say about business? Is it morally good or is it problematic? Are they corrupt? In higher ed, I'm afraid to say uh, the answer too often is business is morally bad. A lot of history had that uh, that feeling or belief. And uh, if that is your proposition, don't expect a lot of growth. And so I think we need to do a little work at examining that and getting back on track and saying, hey, uh, how do we make business morally good and paying attention to that proposition. We got kids in the inner cities right now, uh, lower income folks, and their only hope is to enter the free market economy with a, with a well-paying job. And so if, if we're teaching the next generation that business is morally bad, why would a kid want to sign up uh, for that proposition? It's, it's not attractive. And so this book is hugely important. Uh, she'll refer you to about a thousand other authors in that six volume set. Uh, her first book uh, is, is similar and dealt mainly with the history of virtues, kind of from Plato on. And so that's my reading list, kind of light reading for this summer on the beach. And so I look forward to the stack. And Book TV wants to know what you're reading this summer. Tweet us your answer at Book TV or you can post it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash booktv.